You know what I mean? But I thought it was so cool to be able to hear some of that under there. Uh, you know, what I mean? at least when um, when that was being done, like 15 years ago and stuff. You know, with rap workers and hip hop. You know, honestly, it would seem to be like something that was more listenable uh, to people and more accepting. And it's, as I, you know, I don't know if you really noticed, but the, the straight ahead jazz. Uh, Aficionado or the listener or consumer is like just really dwindling. It's really getting smaller and smaller. Sales are like almost like, you know, I mean, it's hard to really move a straight ahead jazz album. That's why like very few are doing it. Standing, nobody likes like Stanley Clark, George Duke, any of these kind of guys. They're like really kind of moving into that kind of jazz. And it's because it's the way to be able to play and have your music heard, listened to, accepted, and have somebody's uh, attention and a focus from like in your audience. And that's just kind of where the ear has gone. You know what I mean? Just like when it moved from swing era of say like a Benny Goodman, uh, a Satchmo, uh, a Chick Webb, you know what I mean, of the 30s and like what their sound was and then it moved into this bebop thing. And it was, or it moved out of like the big band with all the horns and you know what I mean, Glenn Miller and all that. And it moved into the small combo. It's just like where the ears went. It's not like they led the people, the people actually led them. And my uh, uh, vision and the way that I saw it and heard it and saw it transpire. So we're now, jazz seems to be a dying art form. You don't hear nearly as much as you used to back in the days. There's still a little hot spots here and there in your jazz clubs, but it's nowhere near where it used to be. Where and I mean, hey, it's still a business, you know what I mean, business has changed and, you know, you just have to change with it and understand it. It's sad because music, music is dying or music is like being conveyed and, and, and changed so much that, uh, you know, I, uh, that's like when I did my CD, I decided that like I was just going to go on and just like do music because I, I arrange and I, and I write for strings and horns and orchestrations and so I just had to have that before it just really just gets away and it's like just lost and you know you ask somebody like you ever heard of a violin? <laughs> no! I've never heard of that. What it look like? <laughs> so, No, there's songs that really have been coming to me for, you know, for a long time, actually. And then I just kind of uh, revamped some of them. None of them, none, none of them have been recorded. This is the first time any of them have been recorded. And, uh, you know, maybe half of them were pretty new that I did as I started this process hmm. of recording the CD. So, approximately how long has it taken you to compile? Like a year. Really? It's been about a year coming. Did you have guest artists? Yeah, I had some really, really good people. I had um, a saxophone player by the name of Cal Bennett, who's uh, locally very well known. I had a, a trumpet player by the name of Carmelo Scafini, who's from uh, Canada. And then a lot of um, you know, singers and, and percussionists and people around town are well known. And they had a good time doing it. They like, um, were there for me the whole way. Right, and these people are believing. Yeah. When you hear the album, when you hear the CD, you see that.